Today we're gonna to make the perfect Krispy Kreme copycat donut. It is light and airy on the inside and just melts in your mouth, but it has that perfect crunchy outside with that sweet glaze. Mm. You're gonna to want to eat a whole dozen yourself. Let's get into it. Yes. Okay, so this is a similar method to my other yeast donut recipes, but um, the ratios are totally different. So um, we are gonna start with melting our butter. So, you know, you can, you can give it a whisk while it goes, just to make sure it melts nicely and evenly. So, now we add our oil. And then we are gonna add our milk. Now, I add cold milk uh, because I want to make sure that we bring the temperature of the butter down uh, before we add our yeast. And then we're gonna add our vanilla. What? Yeah. We are going to add our egg next. So you wanna make sure that you kind of cool that down before you add your egg. Otherwise, you're going to um, <clears throat> scramble it. So give it a good whisk here. Just a little, it doesn't have to be a serious whisk. Like just a little, obviously I'm using a giant whisk in a tiny bowl. And then we're gonna whisk it in. At this point, everything is in here and we are going to just take a quick temperature and see where it's at. We want it to be around 106. 101, 102, okay, so 103, 104, great. I'm gonna take it off of the hot burner and I'm just gonna make sure that it doesn't go higher than, you know, 110 is really the max that you wanna see, okay? So now we're gonna add our yeast. We're gonna go ahead and just whisk those in and we're gonna let them sit for about 10 minutes. Just let them kind of um, hydrate, start to activate. You know, we're not waiting to see that there's like a, a, a covering of bubbles or anything like that. Um, we just wanna get them started. Meanwhile, we are gonna whisk together, excuse you, we're gonna whisk together our dry ingredients. So I've got um, some unexpected things here. Um, I've got AP flour, I have cake flour. This is part of what's gonna give it that light texture. Um, and then I've got sugar, same. Also gonna add to that light texture, to that flavor. And then kosher salt. Whoosh. And then we're gonna whisk that in. Choose a bigger whisk. I don't know what I'm, why I chose this whisk, this is terrible. Do, 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 do. All right, great, set that aside. Now we wait, that took like three seconds. We're back. It has been 10 minutes and our yeasties are super happy. They're like, I see like bubbles coming up and they're like, let's get this party started. And I'm like, yes, here for it. So, I don't know what's going on in my head right now, but um, I do know that we are going to take all of this and put it in the bottom of our, we're gonna put it in our bowl. Could you have, you know, hydrated them in there? Sure, but whatever, you do you. And then we're gonna take about half of our flour mixture. So it doesn't have to be a perfect half, it just has to be like, Ish, ish, great. Um, I am going to incorporate all these ingredients with my paddle, as I told, told you in numerous, basically every bread video I've ever done. So just go ahead and kind of mix that nicely. You do want it to look kind of smooth. Um, if there's a few chunks, that's fine because it's going to, they're gonna work their way out when you add the rest of your flour, okay. So we are going to add the rest of our flour. Now it just looks like a batter in there. So go ahead and mix in the rest with the paddle. We're just basically doing the incorporation phase with the paddle instead of the dough hook because it is more efficient in these mixers. We are also, the paddle is going to develop more gluten, oddly enough, at this stage uh, than the dough hook is going to, would. So it, it kind of reduces the overall mixing process if you, if you do use the, the paddle. Okay, great. So now we have like a loosey-goosey dough situation. You're like, uh, whoa. But trust me, yes. Okay, so let's just go ahead and scrape this off of our paddle. Now, we are gonna start develop the, the development phase. We're gonna start put it on medium high and let her go. Now, actually, I'm just gonna turn it down so I can tell you this. Um, this dough is not going to form a perfect ball. It is not going to look the way that you would imagine a, done, a dough that's done to be. Um, it is not going to pass the window pane test, and we don't want it to. We want it to be its free-flowing self. 
because that's what's going to make the best donut. When it is running, the way that you tell that this is done is you can see those strands that are kind of pulling it. You can see the gluten kind of pulling into the center. You can see, you can see the structure, right? Um, and that, that is telling you that it's, it's, it's done. It's good. Okay, so anyways, we are done. I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to take this down. Now, I am going to spray my bowl. Um, just give it a nice spray. A good one, yeah? Okay. And then we're going to spray our bowl scraper. Uh-huh. And our hands. <laughs> yeah, spray your hands. Go ahead and get it off of your dough hook. You see how sticky it is? I know. I told you, this is a high-maintenance dough. This is not a starter dough, okay? This is not something that you want to just like cut your bread teeth on. I mean, you could if you're just a badass. And then take it out and plop it in. It is not going to be cohesive. You can see that it has a bit of structure, right? Do you see that? <laughs> it's still loosey-goosey. It is falling all over the place, and that is fine. That is what we want. Um, I'm just giving it two, two nice folds here just to really kind of cheap insurance for our gluten. Um, and then I'm going to cover this in plastic wrap and we are going to bulk proof this in the refrigerator. Um, it is very important that this first step is bulk proofed in the refrigerator. So we're going to wrap this 30 minutes. Uh, you don't have to wait for it to look for any sort of thing. It's going to double. You can trust me because I have made this thousands of times. Um, okay. All right. It has been 30 minutes and our dough has obviously rested and <laughs> risen. Uh, as you can see. So we are ready to roll her out. Now, um, it is very important, step number one, spray your parchment. So I've got a piece of parchment here on my baking sheet and I'm gonna spray my parchment. Next step, we are going to flour the top of our dough, generously, okay? This dough is sticky, we remember her. Um, she didn't change in the fridge. She is still sticky and we need to be aware of that, right? Go ahead and turn out your dough on your bench. Uh, use a bowl scraper here, that'd be very helpful because it is, again, sticky. Now, you can see she's cohesive, right? It's a nice dough. Uh, very, very loose. Uh, this is what I meant when I said it was difficult to work with. So just flour the top generously. Now, go ahead and flour your bed, your roller. This dough is very loose. It does not take a lot. If you go in there with like full strength, it's you're gonna squish it. So don't do that. So we're gonna gently, do you see? It's like already just the weight of the rolling pin is doing that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to roll it about a half an inch thick. You can see how nice this dough is. Um, if it does start to stick anywhere, just flour it. We control the amount of flour that we put in it. We are also controlling the amount of flour that we're putting on it. But you know, you have to be, it has to be workable, right? Okay. It didn't take much effort at all. It was just like a, like a love, like a loving kind of gentle rolling. Okay. Now I've got a, a three inch cutter here and a one inch, and that is what we're gonna use to make our adunuts. Now, I find it easier to transfer the whole donut without the hole. So I will cut the holes on my parchment. Once you take the hole out, it becomes very unstable, if you will. It, you know, it's easy to um, have it stretch. It's easy to have it, you know, misshape itself, right? So we don't want it to do that, and we want it to be beautiful. If you cut a bunch of them, they're going to reattach themselves to their neighbors, so you don't want to do that either. You just, you know, you want to do one at a time and gently, lovingly, with both hands, transfer it. Um, flour between each one. Now, I've got my cutter here. You can use the bench flour that's there. And then I'm going to pull it out. Oh, we got one. Now, these, these donuts in particular, my other ones, this does not apply. And you can absolutely fry the holes. You can fry these holes as well, but it is actually really, you know, they, they don't fry as nicely. It's almost like they overproof before they're done. You can fry them if you want. They're, they're fine. Okay, so now our donuts have been cut, our holes have been cut, um, and we are going to let these final proof. Now, you have a choice here. You can let them final proof for 30 minutes around um, at room temperature, depending on the heat of your room, um, until they're kind of puffed and light, um, and they will look doubled, and then 
uh, you can fry them at room temperature or you can wrap them with plastic wrap and we can final proof them in the refrigerator for about two hours. So we are gonna pop these in the fridge and then we'll check back in two hours. Meanwhile, we're gonna make our glaze and set our fryer. And we're back. So it has been, I actually proofed these at room temperature so it's only been about 30 minutes. You can see that they're so nicely risen. They're absolutely gorgeous. While these were proofing, I have heated up my glaze. I've made my standard donut glaze uh, with a vanilla flavoring. So that is nice and warm. That's just chilling right here and it's ready for me when I am ready for it. Um, I've been preheating my oil. I like frying donuts at 355. 360 and above is too hot. They will brown before they cook in the center. 345, 340, way too low. They're going to be greasy, um, it's going to take too long to fry, and they're going to kind of absorb all of that oil and like sadness, right? You don't want greasy donuts, you want like crisp but perfectly done on the inside. And I believe, <laughs> in my extensive professional opinion, that that's 355. So I've got a pan set up with a rack and that is what we're going to put our donuts on. Um, to let them kind of drip just a second before we glaze them. I also have a spider. Uh, you can also use a sl slotted spoon. Just know that a slotted spoon or a perforated spoon is going to trap more oil, so you're definitely going to want to be careful about where you're, you're putting it, right? So we've got that. You want to have everything at the ready. Donuts wait for no one. The oil is hot. It looks peaceful in there. It is not peaceful. Please be super careful. So we are at 325 and climbing. Be aware that the oil temperature will like spike, right? It's, it's kind of like syrup for Italian meringue where it like chills and then it goes, right? So you wanna be very, very careful that you're not going to overheat your oil. You wanna walk away at this point. Uh, no, eyes on it like caramel. Okay, we are at just above it. So I'm gonna turn that down. I'm gonna dip my fingers, just my fingers in flour and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to gently oh, place it in there. Okay. So I'm doing two hands. I'm gently taking it and then I'm dropping one side. I'm not getting my fingers anywhere near the oil. No, I am not. I'm going to place these in the fridge. These fry about 80 seconds on each side. These are so light and airy that you will know that they are done when they are golden brown on the outside. I do have a cake tester just in case you're a nervous Nelly and you want to check and see if they are done. Go ahead and give them a flip. I, you can flip by um, kind of going in and flipping them over like that. You can also kind of touch them like that, but these are also so fragile that they might, um, that will, it will actually dent the dough. <laughs> I know. All right, these are looking super light, super fluffy. Look at us. Woo wee. These are beautiful. Now, we can carefully um, take it and, you know, cake test it. So just poke it in the center and make sure it comes out clean. And it does. And I'm going to transfer them delicately to this sheet where I'm going to let them drip for just a second before I glaze them. Careful, Lindsay. All right, so we are just going to glaze these really fast. Our donuts are still warm, but we are gonna power through it, give them, a, give them a nice little swirl about the bath, let them drip a little bit in the, in the glaze, and then transfer. So stop, drop, roll. <laughs> okay. All right, meanwhile, I'm gonna start heating my oil back up for our next round. I'm just gonna pick them up place them in there. They're a little easier to work with when they come from the fridge like this just because they are, you know, they, they kind of hold their shape just a little bit better. I'm going to throw some holes in there also. I'm going to get really big. These guys, their space though. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs their own space. Yeah. All right, and I'm going to throw these back in the fridge. And by throw, I mean gently place. Let's give them a them a flip. Wow, look at that golden brown. Ooh, she purdy. She's purdy. Oh no, she's stuck. <laughs> okay. 
Oh my goodness gracious, look at these kids. Now with these, don't forget, we are going mostly by color. So you don't want to overcook these because they are, they're so light and airy. Um, so just give it a good poke if you're curious and she's done and we're happy. So we're gonna transfer these like we did the last ones, but then I'm gonna go right into frying the next batch um, just so that we can you know, get to a taste in. If you're feeling like a total badass, you can totally dip while they're frying. Uh, my oil is decided it wants to creep closer to 360 and I'm not happy about it. There she goes, she's back down. Sometimes just giving a, a flip or like move with the cold, um, the cold dough will help. Um, but I am going to go ahead and glaze my little, little guys here. They're hot, okay, but we're tough. We've got this. All right, drop it, flip it, swirl it. That's my method. <laughs> As you get glaze on your fingers, it gets hotter. It feels hotter. So just know that. Glaze my last one over here. Drop it flip it, swirl it, yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. Do you see how gorgeous these are? Woo! Ah! Yee. Now make sure you dry your hands completely because water and oil do not mix. Um, and we are going to, oh, yep, these look great. We're just gonna go ahead and pull these out. Um, I'm gonna turn my fryer off and I'm gonna let my oil cool. Now, I'm going to let this sit here. I'm going to let it cool down completely before I touch it. FYI, I'm going to let these cool before I glaze them. And then we're going to try. Yay! I know. I'm excited. Ta-da! Look at these beautiful donuts. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to jump in. I'm gonna pick one that has already been set. So these were, I just did these, and these are from our first round, and I'm super excited. Yes, look at that donut. Do you see the glaze? Oh my gosh. Do you see it? I'm excited. Mmm. Mmm. It is light and airy inside, and it's super soft. It has a nice crisp on the outside and the glaze is perfectly kind of set. It's still soft mm, and just sweet enough. Oh goodness, 